Welcome to another episode of Jay Leno's Garage. Today we're in Austin, Texas at the Circuit of the Americas. This is the new F1 track that just opened last year. And uh, we're gonna go out on the track. Uh, we're gonna play with an F1 car, see if we can get the McLaren MP412C and the F1 car on the same track the first time. So, I don't know, see what happens. We'll meet the designer of the track. Oh, we got a lot of cool stuff, so check it out. Well, here is the actual track here, and you say to yourself, well, who designs this? How do you design a racetrack? Let's meet the man behind it. Christian Epp. Christian, come on in here. Now, your company is Tilka. Is it German, right? Tilka? Yes, it's um, a German name, exactly. And, and you guys do the tracks all over the world. Bahrain, here, where else? Bahrain, Abu Dhabi, right. Malaysia, right. Shanghai. So we have worked all over the world, mostly with Formula One. Now, tell us what goes into designing a track. What is the most important thing? Uh, it's a number of turns. No, it's a certain number of lengths. The length right. typically is three miles long. It has right. to do with TV, actually. It has right. to do with the advertising time that you need. So you can't have a, a track that's 20 kilometers long because it's pretty boring also right, for right. spectators. So right. typically it's a three mile long racetrack. Okay, and you have elevations here as well. What we did is basically what comes into a racetrack design is finding a good plot of land, basically, that offers topography. So when we came here, we were fortunate enough to find this piece of land here. Right. So that's basically we chose the piece of land and then we started designing around oh, okay. with the existing topography. So you don't find a piece of land and then build it up where you have to. You go with what the natural topography exactly. is. Exactly. So when okay, we when we cool. came to Austin, I had the opportunity to choose between three different types of land and we chose this one because especially the part between turn one and eleven is very nice and we play basically with the existing yeah. topography. Now do all the F1 tracks you design have a certain number of left hand and right hand turns or is it just no, that's, that's just right. a combination. Okay. Normally you try to find a balance between them. Right. And then you have left uh, clockwise and anti-clockwise racetracks. No? And this is your longest straight here, right? Exactly. It looks like it has an elevation here. Uh, how long is that straight? That's 1.2 kilometers, so it's 0 0.8 miles long. Okay. And Formula One cars and all the other cars achieve the, the okay. highest speed, of course, there. Right. Now, do you try to limit the straight to keep the high speed down? For example, you would never have Original the mall was what? A mile and a half, two miles, yeah. that straight? They don't do that anymore. No, so you want to have one long straight people want to go, even when you use that track on a day to day and everybody talks, what was your top speed? Right. So it's a nice element to include in a racetrack because everybody that dri drives it on, on a race day wants to say, okay, I clocked 200 miles an hour. So, right. And for Formula One, you need it for overtaking purposes. Right. So the slowest corner is here. Exactly, so that's the hairpin. Basically what you do here, you set up the cars to create an overtaking point here. Right. So this is a very strong braking point. Cars get together and then you create an overtaking point by creating another very strong braking point over here. And your fastest corner is what, right here? Fastest corners is, yeah, right this entire section basically yeah. becomes very fast all the time. Basically it's almost full throttle, but this entire section, this is a series of, of turns between three and six it's a very, very fast turns that you go over yeah, 180 miles yeah. an hour in that section. And you can modify this track also to make it shorter or whatever. Yes, yeah. we include at the moment two shortcuts. So basically you could run in parallel two events. Tell me where the shortcuts are. The shortcuts are not highlighted in this, but the shortcut goes from T6 over basically a little bit before T12. How different is this race car road surface asphalt from a highway, the Autobahn in Germany. Yeah, similar? It's, no, not similar. It's uh, very, very difficult. The granulate that you use yeah. is, uh, has a much better grip on the okay. long term because a normal car has weight down, for example, a normal road. But this year you, want, you have shear forces. Right. So you work differently with the asphalt. The evenness is much, much different. And we're going to go out and take a look at some of these corners. Kristen will show us what it's like up close. <laughs> Well, we're here at the, this is the highest point of the track? Yeah, exactly, that's the highest point of the track. As you can see there's the start finish line down there. And you can see all kinds, all, so all kinds of land in Texas. More grandstands, how many, how many does this hold, this track? So we had on race Sunday last year, 117,000 people. But it can hold more if you want. And what are these here? Are these look like boxes, I guess? These are suites that you can rent as a right. corporation or as friends and family and, have, and host your guests over there. It's amazing how wide this track is. I, you know, I never realized it. Now over here, you mentioned the gravels for when they do motorcycle racing, correct? Exactly. So the, the asphalt is for the cars not to be damaged. Right. Um, so, and, if they, so if they go off the track, 
basically they can rejoin the track right, exactly right. they're not punished in, in that the car is damaged and the gravel is for the motorcycles to to stop the motorcycles actually so basically just slows it down like like sand on a runoff on it. exactly yeah. so, so your impact towards right, the, the wall okay. is much lower so this track is only there's only one formula one race a year here right that's exactly true okay, one so, year so you have to design the track for multiple use exactly yeah okay that's exactly true well come on let's take a look at some of the other parts of the track Obviously, these are the S's here, uphill. Exactly. What's the speed coming through here? So here it should be around 70 to 80 miles, and then of course they, they increase once they go to turn 10. Mm -hmm. And then what you do here, here you get exactly the feeling what you want to create. You see the blind turn. Basically, you know there's a turn, but right. you can't see it, so right. you can't read it. Basically, you have to, to take this next turn by feeling, almost, right. by knowing it. Cool. Let's look around some more. Well, Christian, this is the best place to watch the race, isn't it? Yeah, it definitely wow. is. And the glass floor is a little uh, disconcerting. <laughs> it's only 200 and something. It look, I feel like it's 1,000 feet. It's only 253 feet. That's amazing. This is the only place you can see the whole track, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Actually, a local architect that, that did this track, Juan Mino, and he told us, Christian, you did such a nice track, and you should create a place where you can actually watch it from, from the heights, no? And Christian, you've done a terrific job. Congratulations. Thank you so much. It's and great now you're, having you here. You're building tracks in Russia now? We're building it all over the world. All yeah, over Russia the world. Russia at the moment is one of the tracks that's going to be ready for next year. Wow. Well, thanks for building this here in Texas. You did a great job. Thank you so much. It's pretty cool. McLaren garage with uh, Oliver Turvey. Oliver, you're from London, right? Correct. Yeah. How long have you been with McLaren? Uh, it's my fourth season now with the team um, as a test and reserve driver. Was that races. your dream job as a kid when you were in school? Yeah, I mean, no, since that, I, I mean, that's, that's pretty. Did you start out in go karts and that type of deal? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Since yeah. I was, uh, I went to the Grand Prix when I was five years old. Oh, there you go. And yeah. I first started, I first drove a go kart when I was eight years old. So, okay. um, uh, and what year would that have dream. been? I'm just kind of put that in my. What year would that have been? I'm trying 96. to think. 96. 96. That's yeah. hilarious. <laughs> All right, 96. Okay, so very cool. So then what? You hear McLaren is opening a factory and you go and you apply? I've always looked up to McLaren right. um, as a team. You know, when I was young, a youngster, I always supported McLaren and was, that was the team I always kind of looked up to. So, um, you know, I worked my way through karting, won two British championships and then into junior single seaters. Oh, very cool. And uh, I won a, the McLaren Autosport BRDC Young Driver of the Year Award, um, which got me my first contact with McLaren and, a and a, the prize for that was a test in the Formula One car oh, with the wow. team. So um, that really gave me an opportunity to show them what I could do, and uh, I had a good test. And after that, they signed me up. Well, that's really because that's 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 everybody's dream job. I mean, they definitely. Go, oh yeah, and they're all jealous, just as I am. <laughs> and, and this is the uh, 2011 car, correct? Yeah, this okay. is um, the MP426. So it was raced two years ago. Uh, and you were just out on the track now that we saw you. Pretty, yes, pretty. it was my um, my first time here in Austin. Okay. Um, so. Uh, yeah, first first laps around here. Um, in reality, I've, I've driven it in the simulator before, but okay. to drive it in reality is amazing. Uh, Tell me the difference between this. How, how close is the simulator to reality? Uh, it's very accurate. Yeah. I mean, the, the track maps, the models that we use yeah. in the track are um, e extremely similar. Yeah, the gradients, the corners are, are very accurate. So, you know, in terms of learning tracks, it's a fantastic tool. Tell us about the car itself. Seven um, speeds. Yeah, seven speed. Um, it's all controlled through the steering wheel, really. So you have um, the paddle shift on the steering wheel, you have your upshift and downshift. Also have the clutch paddles on the steering wheel. Um, so, But once you've pulled away, actually, you don't ever use the clutch again. Right. Um, and then you have the, just two pedals. Um, so a bit like a cart, in a way, you have throttle pedal and, uh, and brake. And, and that's it, really. And, uh, and it takes a tremendous amount of concentration. See, I always think race car driving is like sex. All guys think they're good at it, <laughs> but they're really not. Yeah. And it does take a tremendous amount of concentration, doesn't it? Yeah, definitely. I mean, there's, there's so much to think about. I mean, the cars are so quick yeah. that you, you've got to process all the information very quickly. And you've got, a, you've got a lot of controls as well in terms of uh, the diff. You can affect the diff on entry, exit, uh, entry, mid-corner, and exit of the corner. You have engine braking. Uh, multifunction switches to, to make changes to the car while you're driving. Right. So the team are constantly on the radio, giving you telling you giving you information. It's and the you, boss yelling at you all the time. <laughs> you've got to feedback that information, and then also when you come back into after a test 
you've got to then give the feedback of the, the car and what the change right. is done and where, where we can improve. How often do you check those mirrors when you're driving? Is, just, is that just a constant? Not very much. <laughs> Not very much, okay. I mean, uh, certainly, yeah, when you're testing, you don't need them very right. much. And um, it's also quite hard to see much out of them, really. They're, yeah. quite, they're yeah. quite small. <laughs> Oliver, thank you. Thank you. Good luck. We shall be watching you today. Thank you very much. Thanks. Terrific, terrific. Let me introduce uh, Bruce Crawley. Bruce, come on in. You're, you're the technical guy? I am. Yeah, but you, you, you have you? all the secrets? <laughs> A few. Let's see what he reveals today. Tell us about, this is the 2011 car. Engine capacity? Engine capacity is 2.4 litre V8 okay. engine. All right. Here's a dumb question. Do you run magnetic plugs on the bottom of these or drain plugs? Uh, yes, there is on the gearbox. Actually. Oh, they do. There okay. Because yeah, yeah. I didn't know whether that was actually, and you check to see if there's obviously any flag. any debris. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. Our main um, our main way of uh, looking at the condition of the uh, of the gearbox is actually to take an oil sample out. Right. Um, in fact, I think we can actually do that right now. If you want to take an oil sample. That. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, and, and you're going to extract a little gearbox uh, out Yeah, of and you can help. All right. Um, so at the end of every session at the Grand Prix weekend, we take a sample of gear oil and a sample of engine oil, and they're engineers from Mobile. They can analyse uh, this small sample and let us know that it's like a health check for the, for the gearbox right. and the engine. And they, we, we monitor it throughout the weekend and throughout the life of the gearbox. Right. So what we're going to do now is take some oil out of the gearbox tank. Okay. So the gearbox oil system works the same as the engine. It's like a dry sump system. Mm -hmm. You have a scavenge pump which pumps oil into this tank, so which you're going to take the oil from, yeah. and that tank feeds the pressure pump, and that produces the, the pressure for the lubrication system. And what is the pressure? Is that a secret number, or is it? Uh... It's quite. Quite, quite high. It's quite, quite high, yes. Right. Yeah. The flows and the pressures okay. are quite, quite high. Okay. So we we'll take the top off the tank. So you were asking about the um, magnetic plug. Right. Um, and that will capture metal particles or right. large metal particles. So what John is doing now is going to take an oil sample and then when we've taken that oil sample, we can look at the really small microscopic particles right. in the oil. And what's the main problem with gearbox oil with straight cookie? Is it shear? Is, the, is it the, the gearbox just chewing up the oil, literally wearing it out? Is that what happens with the? No, typically the oil is very, very stable. So, oh, it is? Yeah, okay. so we don't see any degradation as far as oil is concerned during the length of the race. Right. Um, but that isn't an issue. What we're doing here with this health check, taking the oil sample, is um, we're looking at uh, about 15 to 20 different elements in the oil. All right, let's extract a little bit here. Give us a hand here. You put the tube in all the way until it stops. All right. Okay, and then we're, we're going to extract 20 mils. Go ahead, give it a pull. So if you, if you, all right, you let's see what we got here. Okay, you'll see the oil coming out. Yeah. That's perfect. That looks about Thank right. Thank you. Yeah. Just wipe the end off. It's important to keep the gearbox clean so you know you're not leaking. Right. Anything. Here we are. And you're. Well, uh, thank you very much. That's it. A little cloudier than the other. <laughs> no, that looks pretty good to me, actually. Yeah, yeah. So, what we would do now is on a race weekend, we have our laboratory in the back of the garage. Right. Uh, we then analyze that. So, within about two to three minutes, yeah. we have the concentration of 15 to 20 different elements, what the concentration so is. So, you could look at this and say to yourself, because actually frictional losses, the thicker the oil, the more loss you get. So you could look at this and go, oh, we could actually go theoretically thinner than this if we wanted to. Is that? Is that? Yeah, exactly. Okay. So what we use this information to tell us is what, what uh, the level of wear is occurring mm -hmm. in the gearbox. So for example, we recently we put a new gearbox all in here with higher efficiency. Yeah. And um, so we'll look at that to see, has that affected the wear of the, in the gearbox? So if you went down too low in viscosity, your wear rate would go right, up. Right, right. And this analysis would tell you I that. see. And these are three... So here we have the three ores. The three flavors that we come in. Three different flavors. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. This is so engine oil. This is engine oil. Okay, that's a little thicker, isn't it? That's a bit thicker than that. Huh? To your eye, maybe, yeah. Oh, oh, to my eye. So that means it's not as thick as I think. It can be deceptive. Yeah, yeah. And of course, this is bespoke oil, isn't it? This is oil made not only for McLaren, but for this car specifically. It is. Only okay. for this engine, right. only for this car, that oil is actually developed. I mean, to give you an example, this a quarter of this would cost, what, $500? <coughs> priceless, absolutely priceless. I, I, but I mean, literally, that's, I mean, that's where your costs come in, because 
if you had another car similar to this, it might even have a different oil than this, correct? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So yeah. Um, this oil is, is continually evolving as yeah. well. So as we find improvements, we will change the composition. Yeah, I mean, that's what's fascinating about F1. It's really, it's really space technology. It's literally like that level. Now this is? So this is the oil uh, that's in the gearbox. So okay. the sample you've just taken. I mean, that doesn't even look like, <clears throat> wow. I'm trying to guess what weight that is. It looks like a 05 or something. <laughs> it keeps... Yeah, I know you're trying to twist my arm, but we definitely can't something. tell you what's trying to find. It's all top secret stuff, but just... <sighs> okay. And this is? And this is the hydraulic oil. Okay. Now that's a different color. We dye it red because okay. occasionally we get leaks on the car. Right. And so and you, you want to know what's immediately sure, sure. be able to, so John will want to immediately identify. So this is running your there. hydraulic clutch, your so brakes. Steering. Okay. Uh, gear shift. Okay. The DRS system, so oh, right. the drag okay. reduction right. system is operated from that. Um, but this doesn't get particularly, well it does get hot doesn't it with the, you know, the brakes, isn't it? Yeah. It does, yeah. yeah, that, yeah. So that, this oil would get over 100 degrees okay. um, and it's running at uh, 200 bar pressure. So okay. it's running extremely high pressure. So the boiling point of this would be, you can't tell me. If you are asking me, no, uh, I, I definitely can't tell you that uh, either. It's, just, it's hilarious. <laughs> it's just fascinating how different this is. But in some ways it's very similar to the lubricant you'd run in your car. I mean, the mobile one that you buy for your road-going McLaren has some of these elements in it, obviously, but not all of them, right? Yes, it does. I mean, uh, there is some similarities. In terms of the performance target, mm -hmm. um, the performance target is to keep the engine running like new. Right. So here, you know, we're, we're, we're aiming to keep the engine running like new because uh, any, any deviation from that, we get power degra degradation. Right, right. So you get performance loss. In a road car, it just extends the life of gotcha. your, right, your right. vehicle. And so, well, very, very similar performance target. Well, Bruce, thank you. I'm not sure why I put these gloves on, but I have them on anyway, so I will say thank you. Thank, thank you, you very you. much for showing me this. And Thank you. Thank you. I, I, I learned a lot. Can I take these all back? Oh, yeah. yeah I, I can't take those, can <laughs> no. I? No, no. <laughs> thank you. I can sneak one out of here. Well, this is the McLaren F1 uh, crew here. Ted Boyer, you're the... Senior mechanic, chief mechanic, what is it? I'm a senior Se test engineer. S so senior test I engineer. Do, okay. Yeah, so I do all the tests and uh, just try and keep all the mechanical test items under control. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to change the wheels. Is that what we're going to do here? Yeah, give it a go. All right, let's, let's see, see if what we have here. I'll leave it to Dookie to look after right. you on this one. I'll stay away from these things. This changes the uh, reaction, so right. that should got it on. Right. So, hook on. And then. Yeah. You got it. That's more than time. Cool. And so these are the things that come out automatically right. to stop the wheel falling off. Just like off. the road car, right, right. Yeah. Cool. So if you switch the switch... Right. Yeah. Go the other way. Undo and we'll change the wheel. All right. Switch the switch. Okay. Yeah. There you go. There you are. There you are. Ready to go. Simple as that. Pretty cool. That was about the slowest wheel change they have ever done. Isn't that correct? What are the wheels made of? Magnesium. They are magnesium wheels. Okay, yeah, they yeah, are proper yeah. magnesium wheels. Okay. And obviously those are bespoke Pirellis, correct? Uh, yeah, they are. They're, they're very soft rubber, especially for these types of events. So that's actually a grippier tyre than they'll run at the racetrack, but it won't last as long. Right, right, okay. Joe, we can fire them between the car. We can do a fire up. Okay. You yeah, you could help us with that if you like. All right. So, to get into the car, it's a bit of a trick. What you're going to need to do is put your hand here, mm -hmm and then step over with one foot into the bottom and That's you can stand in the bottom. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's it. You're in. Then if you put, you can, you can support your weight on either side here, here, here and here. Right here. Yeah, and then push your, lift your feet up and get, try and get them down there. If okay, you can. go down the hole. If you can, go on, a bit further. Oh, it's a feather bed. <laughs> That is fantastic. That's like my Norton. It's actually quite, actually it's, it's built for comfort. There's all kinds of room in here. Right, all of it doesn't doze off. When the engine starts, right. these are the clutches. Right. It's one on each side, so depending on which side he drives out of the garage, you can use either one. And you just use that initially? Exactly. Okay, and so then... So just use the clutch to get into first gear. And then up as this side, one, two, yep. three, that's third. And then back down again. On the other side. Exactly. You can only go down to first gear. Right. The only way you can get to neutral is with the neutral button. Mm -hmm. Let's do it. Let's show that Oliver a thing or two.
What? Very cool. I'm just stuck here for the rest of the afternoon. That's it, man. Well, that was exciting. Thanks, guys. Very cool. Yes, that deserves applause. So <laughs> it does. Well, I want to thank the McLaren guys for only playing the grouch. These guys are working and idiot TV people come in and break up their days. So thanks, you guys. That was real exciting to sit in it and rev it. And it was a fascinating experience. Oh, but thank you. So no problem. I realize how talented you, you are. That's really cool. So how much fun was that? Well, we got to walk the track with Christian. Now we'll drive with David Dunahue. David, uh, you might remember if you come to the website, uh, he was with me when, <laughs> when we spun out, or when I seen it spun out, when I spun out on the Carrera GT down in Talladega. So if he looks a little nervous with me in the car, it's, it's only because it's me. He's actually one of the best there is. So ready to give this a shot? Yeah, let's go have some fun. Oh, cool, let's, uh, let's take it for a drive. Let's put a $500 helmet on a 10 cent head and see what happens. <laughs> Pretty amazing. I mean, that is uh, that is unbelievable. Uh, I've never been that close to an F1 car in my life, and just to see it at speed, how it doesn't even move. I mean, you see the difference between a road car and a track car. As uh, fantastic a handling car as this is, it obviously doesn't come close to a, an F1 car to do. And to hear it go whistling past you at speed, it's just the most it's the most amazing sensation. And David, I thought they're quite credible giving him the run for his money. So uh, it, was, it was exciting to see and, and fun to do. And boy, that's uh, one of those once in a lifetime opportunities. David, thank you very much. My so, pleasure, thank you. David Donahue, that ain't better than that. Keep going, keep going. How's that? All right, so it's a hard break up here because it's a U-turn. Hard break, hard break, hard break. <laughs> It's a really tough track if you haven't been around. Get over to the left side and then feed in the steering. All right, slow up a little bit here. Slow up. A little slower. It's, it's a kind of a slowing speed all the way through. That's it. Now let it wash a little bit wide here. And then pull it in, pull in steering. Right now it's going to switch back to the left really hard. So break a little bit. There you go. And now this is really slow, so break hard. Turn it hard. That's it. Switch back the other way. And then throttle. Now get over to the right side and then feed over to the left. Right, it goes over this way. There you go. It's a hard break and like another U-turn. More break, more break, more break. 
Fun day this turned out to be, and it was great having the J. Lowe's garage sign hanging over the uh, McLaren pit area. Believe me, there's nothing like being in a car like this and seeing the F1 car pass you on the, <laughs> on the inside. That shrieking sound, it was just the thrill of a lifetime. And of course, the Circuit of the Americas, this is just an amazing track. This is a world-class track. I know I keep saying that over and over again, but I'm so proud that we have this here in the United States, that we have European-style racing here. So, very cool. So, all in all, this was what you call a great day. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you guys next week.